So I don't do these types of videos too often, but I usually make videos sort of when people ask me questions over and over again. And one question I get asked all the time is how do you get your stream on Tarkov to look better? I've been streaming Tarkov for about three years now and I've learned a couple tips and tricks along the way. So today we're going to be diving into bitrate, resolution, Tarkov settings and a few other optimization tips and tricks to make your stream just look that tier above the rest. Alright, so we're going to be doing a quick speed test here, punched in speed test, and we're going to be checking out important speeds, which is not so much the download, but it's going to be that upload. And you guys know this, but before you choose a resolution, you need to know how good your upload speed. A general rule of thumb that I learned a long time ago, but you want to take about half of your maximum upload speed and make that your maximum bitrate that you can sustain every thousand bit rate is one megabyte per second of upload required. So an example would be for the partner bit rate at 8,000, you're gonna need eight megabytes per second upload. That is not to say that you just have an eight megabytes per second upload speed. You can see I have 32 and I stream at 8K, but that is definitely under half of 32. And you don't wanna be dropping frames because it can make a lot of people uncomfortable when they're watching you. All right, so these next couple tricks are actually super, super important. So make sure you're paying attention. If you have Streamlabs OBS, this may apply to you. I'm not 100% sure, but for OBS, we're gonna be jumping straight into settings here. And we're gonna go down to the second tab here called stream. Now you guys have your service, whatever that may be, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then your server, depending on where you live, that's fine. What's really important is there's gonna be a setting here that comes unticked standard default settings which is ignore streaming service settings recommendations. This needs to be ticked, okay? You need to make sure you do this because it will say a warning ignoring the service limitation, blah, blah, blah. It's a load of rubbish because what this is, is this hard cap, depending on the platform that you're on, to whatever bitrate that they feel like, okay? So for Twitch, it's gonna have a maximum video bitrate of 6,000 kilobits per second. This is actually really important because I am a Twitch partner, meaning that I can stream in 8K. But if this isn't ticked, it is going to hard cap me at 6K, making my overall stream quality look worse. Another really important one is if we go down from here towards video. Now you're gonna find out whatever your base canvas is, okay? You got a 1080p monitor, it'll be 1920 by 1080p. You got a 1440p or a 2K monitor, it would be 2560 by 1440, 4K and so on and so forth, okay? You find out whatever you have and this will be your base. Now in output scaled resolution, make sure you keep that the same as your base. Don't touch the scaling in this setting, okay? Now we're gonna go down towards the downscale filter and make sure this is on Lanskos 36 samples. Moving on from here, this next question is really just depending on how you wanna run your stream. If your camera's in 30 FPS and your gameplay is in 30 FPS and you're not playing fast moving games, that's fine. Because a 30 FPS stream at a lower bitrate will look a lot better than a higher FPS stream with terrible bitrate. So if you can't afford anything over like 3000 bitrate, maybe consider keeping this in 30. But if you guys are playing FPS games like Tarkov, you definitely want this 60 because it's more natural for the viewer. And that is why having a camera as well that's in 60 FPS is really important to match the gameplay that you're outputting, which can sometimes make the viewer feel out of touch with what's going on in the camera and also in the game. Moving on from here, we're gonna go actually up two tabs to output. Now this one is really, really complicated because there is a lot of different settings that can really go over people's heads. So I'm gonna try and simplify this as much as possible. Okay, first of all, you got two options here, simple and advanced. Now simple is stupid. I wouldn't use simple at all right now. I would actually just go ahead and jump into the advanced setting. This gives you four tabs that you can work with, okay? Now you're gonna have an encoder setting and this one is a huge debate on the internet right now, whether it's NVENC new or NVENC old or X264. All right, let's just get into some basic rule of thumb. If you are a single PC gamer, like I am, single stream, whatever, NVENC new is amazing. You can only get this on 20 series NVIDIA cards or 3000, etc., etc. But this is absolutely 
class for streamers, especially single PC setups. What NVAC New can provide is a way more efficient way of encoding and can compare to X264 Medium. If you're not sure what I mean by this, X264 is a CPU encoder. And if you keep this on rate control CBR, you get different presets, okay? Now these presets, the slower the preset, the better quality image, but the more load on your CPU. Now most streamers can get away with maximum medium. I have a 5950X and I can run medium on a single PC setup. And honestly, the FPS isn't too bad. But the thing is for you guys out there, is you if you are running ultra fast or super fast and you're still dropping you're still dropping frames maybe try and get your hands on a nvidia card because it will actually compete up to medium x264 in terms of image quality there's also plenty of videos out there that show the differences between all of them and do a much better job of explaining it so if you guys aren't sold make sure you do a little bit of researching but general rule of thumb anything past medium like slow and slower these are for streaming PCs only. People who have a dedicated rig to doing the encoding, it will look better than NVENC. Okay, and that's just the sad fact. But NVENC new can look as good as X264 medium. So that's why it's so clutch, especially for single PC gamers. And that's why I rave on about it. All right, so this next one is super, super important. We're gonna be looking at the settings here and we're gonna be talking about resolution. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier on, but you're gonna be noticing that my rescale output is ticked here but wasn't in video. Now, this is super important because this is where I do my rescaling for my streaming, but not my recording. See how we have this in advance? It gives us the option to do both. This is super important because I wanna rescale for Twitch, but I don't wanna rescale for YouTube, okay? So moving on from here, let's find out what resolution we had. Remember that bit rate that we found out a little bit earlier? So we're gonna be going to a website here and you guys can search this up on your own. Just type in true 16.9 resolutions. And this is true for me because I stream in a 16.9 aspect ratio. Now going to this website here called pacoop.com by this lad called Pacoop and he's actually done really, really good work here. He gives you a bunch of different resolutions that are 16.9. And the ones that are highlighted in green are divisible by eight. What does this mean? It means that your encoder doesn't have to work as hard to downscale the image. So if you have a 16.9 resolution that's divisible by eight, you can actually get a much better higher quality image and your encoder doesn't have to work as hard. Now you can see a bunch of different resolutions here. Now really just depending on what type of bitrate that you have, depending on what type of resolution you should use. An example would be at the age old 1280 by 720p. Now this is actually a 16.9 resolution that is also divisible by eight. And the awesome thing about 720p is it's a nice spot to sit if you can't stream in a high bitrate. I'm talking about 3000 to 4000 bitrate. If you can maintain that, a 720p stream, whether that's 30 FPS if you're on the lower end of 3K or 60 FPS if you're around 4K bitrate, a 720p stream will look pretty damn good on Twitch anyway, especially if that's all the amount of bitrate you can have. Remember the analogy between the canvas and the paint, all right? If your canvas is too big and you don't have enough paint, it's gonna look like shit, okay? So a general rule of thumb is 720p for 3K bitrate, okay? Or 4K if you can get away with it. If you wanna step the game up from there, let's say you can have four, four and a half, you could also try out some of these different resolutions, whether that's 1408 by 792 or 1536 by 864. This is a really nice resolution right here in terms of the five to 6K bitrate sweet spot, okay? This resolution, although weird, is really good because a general rule of thumb is the higher the resolution, the better the quality image when you're standing still, but the lower the resolution, especially with higher bit rates, the better the image will look when you're moving. And Tarkov is all about movement. You're moving through grass, you're moving through areas. So if you're struggling with your image quality and your bit rate is not keeping up, lower the resolution, okay? Just because you can stream in 1080p doesn't mean you should. You should probably never stream in 1080p. And anyone that does, it will look like garbage, okay? 
The next resolution here is 1664 by 936 p and this is the one that I personally stream in. Now I can stream up to 8K bitrate, but I still choose to have 1664 by 936 p as this is the perfect balance between nice still image and also low enough resolution while I'm moving to keep a quality image up. Now, if we look at the last two resolutions here, you're gonna notice uh, 1792 by 1008p, which is the Deadly Slob Canadian HD special. Now, you guys love laughing at Deadly Slob for that meme, but there's a reason that he runs this resolution. And that is because if you're standing still, 1008p is going to look better than 936p, but in fast movement and grassy areas, he's gonna sacrifice a tiny bit of image quality. So if he's playing indoor maps, it's going to look crispier. But if he's running around outside, it's going to look way worse. So a general of thumb, avoid 1920 by 1080p because no one on Twitch can sustain a bitrate to make this look good, especially for Tarkov. So obviously next up is going to be your game settings. And the best thing you could possibly do as a streamer, especially if you are using things like painkillers, you'll notice that the moment I pump something like a morphine, it increases the sharpness. And when I move around, you're gonna notice a lot of artifacting. And this is one of the things that a lot of beginner streamers make as one of the biggest mistakes, I guess you could say. Though I know you guys can't exactly avoid using painkillers, the types of painkillers that you use is very important. Things like the actual painkillers themselves make a very sharp image and can ruin your image quality. I did notice out of all the different options, ibuprofen definitely had the least amount of sharpen on the screen. So if you guys are really, really struggling with the sharpening effect, especially on grassy areas, consider using ibuprofen. Things like Golden Star and Vaseline, I did notice make your screen much sharper than all the other alternatives. So avoid using these if you are having troubles with this problem. Now, once again, if you do lower your sharpen down enough, you can still notice that even though I'm on painkillers, it doesn't look absolutely horrible, even though I'm moving with a visor on. Sharpness is the enemy for encoders. So the best way to get around that is to wear something like either a visor when you're on woods. And visors definitely do help, guys. If you put a visor down, especially in the grassy areas, it can blur it and counteract that sharpen or to go through and make sure that your sharpness is down. Now you can see that I run 0.3 sharpness. And if you go towards my post effects as well, I actually don't have much of any sharpen. I've only got 15 adaptive sharpen and a tiny boost on clarity. Now you can actually go lower than this as well as the fact that a lot of people in their settings will run this disgusting setting here called FXAA, anti-aliasing. So the biggest problem with FXAA is the sharp corners that it's meant to fix can actually make a lot of artifacting and can also cause problems with your encoder. So TAA high, although it's just that tiny bit more blurry, I would def definitely recommend turning that on and trying to get the best that you can out of your image, trying to lower your sharpen as much as possible, especially in grassy areas. Now, another also cheeky little trick as well that a lot of people don't actually seem to realize is that actually putting on Z blur can help your image quality as well, because you can notice that the bottom part of my P90 is now blurred. So that's actually, if you are depending on the gun, that's less that your encoder has to worry about sharp details and can focus the details on other things. All right, so this next trick seems to be slept on by a lot of people in the community because I don't think people are aware of that you can do this and you can do this for any game, that's the best part. You can actually add filters to your OBS. So I'm gonna bring up my OBS preview here and we're gonna go ahead towards the EFT. So this is my game capture. Right click and go towards filters and then once you're in filters, you're gonna have a option for one called color correction. Now I've already applied this and this is all on zero, but the best thing is you're gonna have a quick look at this preview window of my Tarkov. Now I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see it just that tiny bit better, right? But basically what you wanna do, depending on the map, so you can go into an interchange or whatever dark map that you may play, and I'm just gonna bump up the gamma a tiny bit. Now you can watch it for yourselves, but look how much easier it is to see in Ollie already and I generally leave this around 0.20 but you can put this higher or lower depending on the maps that you play however if you play outdoor maps and you have this too high it's going to be hard for your viewers to see another nice little one is I generally bump the saturation just also helps in some of the darker areas in the back of Ollie and genuinely makes a huge difference in the quality of your viewers experience so just the last tip for staying to the very end 
This one is actually really sweet and something Twitch added sort of recently, but not a lot of people know about it. Um, it's Twitch VOD track, and it's allowing you to play music in, you know, in your streams, but not have them saved to the VOD. Now, this is really interesting, and I have this set up maybe a little bit differently than you guys. If we pop over towards my live scene, you're going to see me twice. But if we look down, I actually have a Spotify tab here, which is generally playing music to, you know, uh, my stream. But if we go in towards the advanced audio properties, you're going to be noticing a few interesting things about how I have this set up. And you're going to notice that everything is ticked here on tracks except for number two. Now, if we dive into the settings and we go back towards output, you're going to notice that just below streaming with advanced settings ticked, Twitch VOD track is ticked and I have it ticked on two. This means that anything that plays to audio track two gets saved to my VODs and my clips. So if I'm playing music to everything but VOD 2, then even if I'm playing a copyrighted song and someone clips it, there will be no music in the clip, there will be no music in the VOD, and your VODs will not get muted and whatever, so on and so forth. Hey guys, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, feel free to subscribe. I know this isn't the type of video I usually make, but I appreciate you guys staying to the very end. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.